All right, so this video will be about finding more than one match when you're trying to look up a value. So for example, if I have this ID for this company and we have this list of companies and we also have this list of contacts. Now each company could have more than one contact. So if I look up this ID that ends with 3300, in here, let's just do command F and command V. See, we have what seems to be two people, Ross and this other person, they both work for that company. So we have two people matching that. Now, the same way we could have more than one person matching this one too. So if I go here and do a search, see, we have one, two, three, four. So now we have four people matching this company. I'm going to show you what are some different ways we can match the data and bring it over together with two data tables like this. So the first question when you get something like this is what the end result should actually look like. So for example, if we look for this 3300 and remember we found there were like two, I think it was this and this. So how do you want that to show up on the other spreadsheet? So one way could be to have somebody in this first column and another person in the second column, something like this. So that would be a way to, I guess, represent it, which would still be kind of weird way because if you had four people, then in the second company, you would just have four columns for different people. But Again, it's a valid way to represent the data, I guess. Another way to represent this is to get the results in the same cell for both. So maybe comma separate them or something and get something like this and then you wouldn't have this. So now you could comma separate two values, three values and things like that and it would work out, right? So that's another approach to this. And finally, the third approach I can think about this is this. We could replicate this line and have this person show up here. And then if you had four of these, then you would have four times this company repeating here with all of this data. And then you would have four different people showing up on the site. So you might come up with another way, who knows, but those are the ways I'm gonna go through. So how can we accomplish these different things that I just talked about? So let's start with just putting them side by side, the way I was just describing the first instance, right? So to do that, I'm gonna start with a filter function. So we're gonna do equals filter. And here we're gonna have to do, I'm gonna close this, we're gonna have to do a range that we're trying to filter. So for me, that range is gonna come from contacts. I'm gonna go to contacts tab, and that's gonna be the results that I actually want. So that's going to be these names. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and I'll drop the end reference for this range so that it goes all the way down and then we'll do F4 to lock this range. So the dollar signs and then I'm going to do comma and then we need the condition. So the condition is going to be, we need to make sure that the uh, company ID is matching the other company ID. So we're going to start with this range of company IDs again. So I'm going to drop the end reference again and do lock with F4. So that will be the range of company IDs. And I want to make sure that equals to, and I'll go back to company spreadsheet and click on this company ID. So basically I'm filtering the other list to company IDs that match this company ID. So if I close this and hit enter, you'll see we get those two people who were matching that company ID. Now they're not showing up like this in the row though, they're showing up like this in a column. So to change that, I'm gonna put this in a function called transpose. And what transpose does, it basically just changes your 
columns to rows or rows to columns. So here we go. So now if I take this formula and drag it down, I should have everybody that's matching the company. So if you remember, the second one had four, so therefore I have four columns here. And this one apparently has none. So if we go and check like this ID, see zero matches for that. So that's valid. So here we go. So this is the first example, right? So we use our filter function with transpose, put the values in here, we're done. I'm gonna remove all of this. Let's look at our second case. I'm gonna drop this transpose function. So the second case, we want to basically just comma separate these things in the same cell. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to this and I'm gonna take this filter function that returns those values and put them inside of a join function. And join function is gonna ask for a delimiter so basically the separator between different names. So if I wanted that to be a comma, I'm gonna do a comma in quotes, comma, and then after this comma, so this comma is just the argument separator. After this comma, I'm gonna provide this array, which is what we have. So I just need to close parentheses all the way to the right here, like this, and hit enter. And we should have those people comma separated. So if I drag this down, you should see how we get comma separated list of results. And if there is only one, see there's no comma separators. So this is where join function is excellent for this. So it's not gonna add commas if there's only one. So if you wanted to change that, maybe you want a space between the comma and the second name, you could add like comma space. And then you could drag this down. So now instead of having those names exactly after the comma, there will be another space after that. Or you could do another separator, maybe you want to do like a dash or something. All right, so those are the first two cases. So one is using filter with transpose, the other one is filter with join. So the third case is the most complicated one, I guess, out of these is when we need to replicate this row all over again so we can put those names next to it. Now, we're not gonna be able to put this in the same tab right here. Well, we could do it on a side or below, I guess, but what I'm trying to say, it's not gonna fit within the data because if we're replicating this, it's not gonna work out with this data set. So we need to get the results in a separate tab. So I'm gonna create a new worksheet here. I'm gonna call it find multiple matches. And for this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use super SQL function. Now this function by default is not a function that's available in Google Sheets. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a video that shows you how you can install this so you can use it if you want to use it but this is what I'm gonna use to get that joint result. Now, to be able to use this, there are some requirements. You have to make sure that each data set has column headers and they're all unique like this. So you cannot have two column names that are the same or missing column names or something like that. And that also applies to the second data set. So we have to make sure we have unique column names here. Now, once we get that, we should be able to use our super SQL function. And the first thing is our SQL string or SQL string, however you wanna call this. So that should be in quotes. And I'm gonna go back to that SQL string in just a second. I'm gonna do comma. Then it's the data as array. So what is the data we want to use? We do have two data sets. So I'm gonna go ahead to companies worksheet and I'm gonna select this thing, including headers on top. I'm gonna drop the end reference. I don't have to lock this because we're not gonna be dragging this down, comma. And then after the comma, we can actually provide a second range, which is gonna be contacts. So I'm gonna go to contacts and also select 
this range, including headers, drop the end reference, close parentheses. Now we're not done yet, but this is a beginning. Now what we have to do, we have to go back to this quotes and do a select statement to make this whole thing work. So for now, I'm just gonna hit enter. This is gonna give us an error. That's not supposed to work because we didn't do a valid statement yet. And we're gonna go back and try to do the statement. So in this statement, we need to basically work with these two tables. One is called companies, the other one is called contacts, right? And from both of those tables, we're gonna need some columns to be returned. So for example, from this companies table, I have company, which is not spelled right. Let me actually spell that right. Company, we have city, state, and balance. Those are the columns, if you want all of them. Maybe you want some of them, not all of them. I'm gonna do all of them. So let's say I want these four columns and maybe you also want the column ID. So that would be basically all columns from this particular one. So I'm gonna do that by going back to the statement and in this quotations, I'm going to do select keyword, do a space, and then I have to follow this by the columns I want from the first table. Now we have to give some names for these tables and we're gonna have to come up with these names ourselves. So I'm just gonna call this first table CO for company. So that's the company table. So I want all columns from the table. So I'm gonna do CO dot and then star. So star in this case means all columns. So I want all columns from our company's table, comma. Now what columns do I want from the contacts table? Now let's assume I want all columns from contacts table as well for the time being. So I'm gonna name this second table something. So I called it CT. And then I'll do again dot star for again all columns from that second table as well. So now once I have this, I'm gonna do from. Now we have to say which tables these are coming from. So this froms are gonna be question mark here. So this question mark is gonna refer to this first range, which is gonna be our company's table. And we're gonna make sure that we call that whatever we called it here. So that's CO, that's the name of the table. So I'm saying this first range, we're calling it CO. And therefore here we can say from that range, from that CO range, we want all of the columns. So then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do left join. Now we need the second table. So I'm gonna do a question mark again. And the second question mark is gonna refer to the second range, which is our context table. So that table we're naming CT based on this. Now, the final thing I have to do is show which column we're joining these two tables on. So I'm gonna do on. And the first table that I've just named CO has that column that was called, which I don't remember at this point, but see this COID company ID, and then we also have this COID from this. So those are the columns we're joining these two on. So I'm gonna say we're joining the first table, which I called CO, with this COID column, and we want that to match, which is where I'm gonna do an equal to, from that second table, which is a context table, the column that's also, in my case, called COID. Now that column doesn't have to necessarily have the same name in both tables, but you're gonna have to match the column name in both. So in my case, it's the same, so it's gonna be the same. I'm gonna hit enter. And what we should have is our results table. Now you can see how I got all the columns from both tables with our match. So I got, see, Wesley and this person. And then for this company, remember we had like four people so that's pretty much what I'm getting here. So I got my joint results. Now, if you didn't want all the columns, you can just choose which columns you want from each table. So let's say I didn't want all these columns from the second table, which is what I have right now, name, email, phone, department. Maybe I only want the names, right? So in that case, I would just go back to this statement. And instead of doing ct.star, I would just do ct.name, which is the name of that column for names. So if I do enter, now you'll see it's only gonna return the names for people. So they should be in here, see? Now when you do this, the names are appearing in the beginning, not in the end. 
So if you want to control this order, you also want to go here and also list the columns from the first table too. And that will also let you choose like which columns you want to actually display. So I'm gonna say from the first table, I would like to get what was called COID, which is company ID. And then I would like to also get, again, I just have to comma separate them, CO dot, whichever the next column was called. So I think one was called company. So for right now, let me just do this too. So if I hit enter, see we get ID, company and name. So these two are coming from this first table and this third one is coming from this second table. Now, if I also want to get the city, state and balance, I just have to basically just add those columns. So I go here and do co.city, comma, co.name. It wasn't name, it was state. And finally, co.balance, comma. So we wanna make sure we don't forget one of those commas. So I'm gonna hit enter and we should have our joint table. See, those columns and finally the name. You could choose which order you want these columns in. So maybe you want state and then city. And that's as simple as just listing the columns in the order you like them. So I can go here and say the state is here and the city is after that. And that should bring me this. A few different ways to find multiple matches from data sets. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.